Hey, you all. I'm Kimberly K, and I would like to welcome you and thank you for stopping by to Honey Bunny's Read Along. Today, you guys, I'm going to be reading a very, very great story. I think it's going to be something nice, and it might be a little sad as well, but we're going to read the story. We're going to discuss the story. If you have any questions about the story, then you can always comment below and I will surely, surely always get back with you guys. I would like to thank parents for letting your little bunnies come and sit in and listen to the story I'm going to read. So today's story that I'm going to read today, you guys, is by Deborah Hawkinson and it's called Sweet Clara and the Freedom Quilt, illustrated by James Ransom. So this is what... I'm going to be reading today you guys I think it's like I said it's going to be something very interesting so when I'm reading this story I would like all the little bunnies to pay attention have listening ears open up those big old bunny eyes very wide and I'm also going to make sure you guys get to see the nice illustrated pictures that is in the book and if there is anything anything that you would like to talk about as far as this book right here then I want you to please, please leave it in the comment section. Do not be afraid to ask a question. It is okay to ask questions. That's how we learn, by asking questions. And especially if it's something, you know, as far as I'm reading in this particular book today. So this is the book that we're going to be focused on today. Um, I'm going to start trying to bring these stories to you guys every week now. Every week on Saturdays, I'm going to try now to bring you guys a new story and something different. Always pay attention, you guys, to what the story is saying. Always pay attention to the details of the story. Always pay attention to the pictures and look how, because let me tell you something. A lot of work goes into writing stories for you guys, but a lot of work also also going to draw these pictures for you guys to go along with the story and it gives you a bit a better understanding when you have some pictures to look at and guide you through the story so today this saturday today i'm going to be reading this book right here next saturday you guys i have a special special treat i'm going to come in and read my own book that i wrote and it is available on amazon i'm going to come in and read my own book i wrote to you guys okay and it's gonna be super super cool to read my own book to you guys but um we're gonna go ahead and read this book today to you guys okay well not we i i'm gonna do the reading you're gonna do the listening i hope you enjoy the story sit back relax and remember have those bunny ears up and listening and have those big wide bunny eyes open and paying attention to the story. That is what you need to do when anyone is reading something to you. You really have to pay attention and understand. So that way you understand the story in full. And that way also you get to see all the beautiful illustrated pictures in the book. Okay? Okay, let's get started. Before I was even 12 years old, I got sent from North Farm to Home Plantation because they needed another field hand. When I got there, I cried so much that I thought I was never going to eat or drink again. I didn't want to leave my mama. I'm going back to her, I whispered every day to young Jack, who worked beside me in the fields. Well, you better start eating all you can, sweet Clara, he smiled at me. But then his smile was gone in a low voice he said, or else you won't make it. Young Jack help me believe I'll get back to my mama someday. Truth was, I'll be lost before I got through the fields, them being so big and all, but I didn't give up dreaming. Aunt Rachel was raising me now. She wasn't my for real blood aunt, but she did her best to care for me. One night she came back from working in the big house and found me lying dead tired on our cabin floor. She shook her head and said, Sweet Clara, you ain't gonna last in the fields, but I got an idea. Aunt Rachel's idea was sewing, and she started teaching me the very next night. It wasn't easy for me to learn. My hands are already rough and clumsy from hoeing and weeding the fields. 
So Aunt Rachel took it real slow. She brought scraps of cloth from the big house and taught me about each one, how it was special and had to be treated in its own way. I like to piece the scraps together to make pretty patterns of colors, but Aunt Rachel didn't care much about pretty patterns. Now you rip off the whole row and do it again, Clara, she say. Why I gotta make the stitches so tiny, I complain. You gonna be a real stringress, that's why. Tomorrow, you coming with me to the big house. I got it all worked out, Aunt Rachel say one day. I was frightened. You ready to sew with me? She went on. Mrs. Daughter Ella be getting married come spring. I told Mrs. I'll be needing help. She look at your work with sharp eyes, Clara. So do it quick and neat like I taught you. Next morning, I tried to eat some cornbread, but my insides was all knotted up. I never been inside the big house before or seen white people that close, except the overseer. The morning sun was streaming into the sewing room, turning everything all sunflower yellow. Aunt Rachel gave me some sheets to him. Instead of being contrary, that needle did all I wanted, just like it was part of my hand. At the end of the day, Mrs. come in. Let me see your work, Clara, she say. I gave her the sheet and she ran it through her hands real slow. I held my breath watching. From now on, come here, she say at last. When she left, Aunt Rachel and I looked at each other, about ready to burst. We done it, girl. She cried. So I changed from a field hand to a seamstress. Since the sewing room was right off the kitchen, Aunt Rachel and I was near cooking the helpers. There was always a lot of bustle and company in the kitchen. I was hearing about all kinds of new places and things. I listened so hard, it felt like my ears must be growing right out my head and getting big with listening. One day, two white men come to see the master. The drivers went into the kitchen to talk to cook. There have been too many runaways last summer, one of the drivers said. They going around asking all the masters in the county to join the patrollers. Crazy, running away, muttered cook as she beat up some batter. Where you going to get to? Self lost in the swamp. Don't know, said the other. But I hear we ain't that far from the Ohio River. Once you get that far, the Underground Railroad will carry you across. That's right, agreed the first. The railroad will get you all the way to Canada. Then you free forever, Cook snorted. If it be as easy as you two let on, more would have gone. One of the men replied in a quiet voice, it'd be easy if you could get a map. Walking back from the big house that evening, I asked Aunt Rachel about what I heard. Where is Canada and what's the Underground Railroad? See there, Aunt Rachel pointed, that's the North Star. Under the star, far up north, is Canada. The Underground Railroad is people who've been helping folks get there, secret-like. She looked at me hard, but don't you start thinking about it. You run away and get caught, you'll be beaten still. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Next day, I asked Cook, those two men that was here yesterday, they was talking about a map. What's a map? Just a picture of the land, that's all. Whatever's on the ground, a map can have it. Sunday, I went to my favorite place on a little hill and looked out at the people's cabins in the fields. I took a stick and started making a picture in the dirt of all I could see. But how could I make a picture of things far away that I couldn't see? And how could I make a map that wouldn't be washed away by the rain? A map that would show the way to freedom. Then one day, I was sewing a patch on a pretty blue blanket. The patch looked just the same shape as the cow's pound near the cabins.
The little stitches looked like a path going all around it. Here it was, a picture that wouldn't wash away. A map. So I started the quilt. When you sewing, no matter how careful you be, little scraps of cloth always be left after you cut out a dress or a pillowcase. So while my ears kept listening and my hands kept sewing, I began to squirrel away these bits of cloth. When we was off work, I went to visit people in the quarters. I started asking what fields were. Then I started piecing the scraps of cloth with the scraps of things I was learning. Aunt Rachel say, sweet Clara, what kind of pattern you making in that quilt? And no pattern I've ever seen. I don't know, Aunt Rachel. I'm just patching it together as I go. She looked at me long, but she just nodded. There was a buzzing in the quarters one summer evening. I saw the patrollers and I knew someone had ran away. It was young Jack, but five days later they caught him. The next Sunday I went to see him and we walked to the top of the little hill. He didn't smile the way he used to. I took a stick and began to draw in the dirt. I drew a little square for a big house, a line of boxes for the cabins of the quarters and some bigger squares for the fields east of the big house. I drew as much as I'll piece together Jack sat beside me and not saying anything, not even looking at first. Then he started seeing what I was doing. I handed the stick to him. I hear him catch his breath up quick and then he began to draw. worked on the quilt for a long time. Sometimes months would go by and I wouldn't get any piece of sewn in it. Sometimes I had to wait to get the right kind of cloth. I had blue calico and flower blue silk for creeks and rivers and green and blue greens for the fields and white sheeting for roads. Mrs. like to wear pink a lot so big house, the quarters and finally the big house in North Farm they was all pink. The quilt got bigger and bigger and it Folks knew what I was doing, no one said, but they came by the sewing room to pass time of the day whenever they could. By the way, Clara, a driver might tell me, I heard the master say yesterday he didn't want to travel to Mr. Morris's place because it's over 20 miles north of here. Or someone would sit eating cooks food and say, so as I could hear, word is they gonna plant corn in the three west fields on the Venora plantation this year. When the master went out hunting, cook's husband was the guy. He come back and say that swamp next Next to home plantation is a nasty place but listen up Clara I'll tell you how I thread my way in and out of there as smooth as your needle in that cloth then one night the quilt was done I looked at it, spread it out in the dim light of the cabin. Aunt Rachel studied it for the longest time. She touched the stitches lightly, her fingers moving slowly over the last piece I added, a hidden boat that would carry us across the Ohio River. Finally, there came to rest on the bright star at the top. She tried to make her voice cheery. You always did like to make patterns and pictures, Clara. You get yourself married to young Jack one of these days, and you two will have a real nice quilt to sleep under. Aunt Rachel, I couldn't sleep under this quilt. I asked her softly, putting my hands over hers. Wouldn't be restful somehow. Anyway, I think it should stay here. Maybe others can use it. Aunt Rachel slighted. But ain't you gonna need the quilt where you going? I kissed her. Don't worry, Aunt Rachel. I got the memory of it in my head. It rained hard for three days the next week. Me and Jack left home plantation in a dark thunderstorm. The day after, it was too stormy to work in the fields, so Jack wasn't missed and Aunt Rachel told them I was sick.
We went north following the trail of the freedom quilt. All the things people told me about all the tiny stitches I took, now I could see real things. There was the old tree struck down by lightning, the windy road near the creek, the honey path through the swamp. It was like being in a dream you already dreamed. Most we hid during the day and walked at night. When we got to North Farm, Jack slipped in through the darkness to find what happened my mama at. Then we went to get her and found a little sister I didn't even know I had. Mama was so surprised. Sweet Clara, you grow so big, her eyes just like I remembered, her arms strong around me. Mama, I'm here for you. We going north. We know the way. I was afraid they wouldn't come, but then Mama say yes. Young Jack carried my sister Anna and I held on to Mama's hand. We kept as fast as we could, skirting farms and towns and making our way through the woods at last. One clear dark night, we come to the Ohio River. The river was high, but I remember the place on the quilt where I marked the crossing. We searched the bushes along the banks until at last we found the little boat. This was hid here by the folks in the Underground Railroad, I said. The boat carried us across the dark deep water to the other side, shivering and hungry and scared. We stood looking ahead. Which way now, Jack asked me. I pointed, the North Star was shining clear above up there through the woods, north to Canada. Sometimes I think back to the night we left, when young Jack come to wake me. I can still see Aunt Rachel sitting up in her bed. She just shook her head before I could say a word. Before you go, just come cover me with your quilt, sweet Clara, she said. I'm too old to walk, but not too old to dream. And maybe I can help others follow the quilt to freedom. Aunt um, Rachel kept her word. The quilt is there still at home plantation. People go look at it, even folks from neighboring farms. I know because some of them come and tell me how they used it to get free, but not all are as lucky as we were, and most never can come. Sometimes I wish I could sew a quilt that will spread over the whole land and the people just follow the stitches to freedom as easy as taking a Sunday walk. A picture of the quilt the end of the story you guys thank you for stopping by honey bunnies read along and listening to this wonderful story this was such a wonderful story and also the pictures and the story like the details are just so beautiful they are just awesome please leave any comments below if you have any questions about the story and i'll answer them to the best of my ability also i would like to tell you about um next week's um read along like i said it's going to be a book called black pepper and it's a book that's actually wrote by me and i'm going to be reading that book next week so please come on back next saturday and listen to that story but let's focus on this story right here this story was so wonderful and i would like my little buddies to comment in the comment section and tell me what was your favorite part of the story you know what did you like about the story i'm going to tell you one of mine what i like about the story is that everyone was actually helping her to make this map using this quilt but this is the whole thing about it they never ever gave her direct information it will always be like a he said she said type of ordeal and she will just you know stitch it and make the quilt out of that that's what i really liked about this story i liked how she went and got her mother first and then finding out that she also had a sister and she wanted got her mother and her sister so she can help them as well to freedom this is a wonderful wonderful story it gives you a little bit more of an idea of how it was being a slave 
and I just could not really imagine those times like if I was a slave like I just couldn't imagine those times I probably would break down every day just not having my freedom it also gives you an idea about the Underground Railroad and how those other slaves put that together to help other slaves be free so that is another um story and another subject at another time to really get into and we're gonna have more stories like this on honey bunnies read along but like i um said next week we're gonna do a story called black pepper and it's, it's a great story and i want you guys to come back and also if you're not subscribed to honey bunnies please go ahead subscribe and do the bunny hop and become a bunny of my channel i will greatly greatly appreciate it you guys and i'll see you all soon for the next read along have a awesome awesome wonderful blessed day and if you don't have this book you know at home on your bookshelf this is a great book to get you guys i'm telling you this is a wonderful book to have and i'm so happy that i have added it to my collection of books um my children love it because i have read it to my children I have five younger bunnies. I have six total, but one of my bunnies is grown. They're not a bunny no more. They are a rabbit. <laughs> okay, they are a rabbit. But I have five younger bunnies that loves this story. And this is a wonderful story, you guys. So with that being said, to the next time, everyone have an awesome, awesome, blessed day. Thank you for stopping by.